So welcome back to Unheard Gems, which is the best place to find the best and great emerging artists. We're so thrilled to get to chat with the Unlikely Candidates today. It's been almost two years since we've talked. How are you? Not bad. Yeah, not bad. It's, uh, it's been a couple interesting years, but uh, we're back out here rolling again, just uh, getting things going. It's been good. <laughs> And so for our readers and listeners who really don't know you yet, could you just give us a glimpse into who your band is and how your music came to be? Uh, we are an alt rock act out of Fort Worth, Texas called the unlikely candidates. Um, me and my buddy Cole started this band in high school Neither of us had ever played an instrument or written a song or really even knew anyone who did either. And for some reason, we thought it would be a great idea to start a band. And it was not a bad idea on some accounts, but uh, we're still rolling. It's our first band. And uh, now I think it was, I think that was like at the very end of 2007. So we're, uh, we're still going. Yeah. That's kind of the background background on it. Uh, I think our music's probably evolved a ton. We were pretty terrible at the beginning, I'm not gonna lie. It was just an acoustic duo, and I think we were still coasting off the back end of that uh, warp Tour thing, which we didn't really fit into anyways. Like, so I think that was just the only people that were playing shows locally. And just through time, we built it up. We built it into a full band. We've kind of crossed a bunch of different genres from then and kind of continue to do so. And yeah, I think we're just kind of a little bit of like a a genre crossing alt rock outfit a little bit. Yeah. It's interesting. I wonder how that duo would have done if it hadn't evolved into what you guys are now. Probably have more money, less members, you know, uh, I don't know how that duo would have done. If we just stayed acoustic, it'd be so weird because I was like just a front man. So really it's just someone playing an acoustic guitar and then me like running around on stage. So it was just kind of a weird vibe in general, but maybe we could have started, you know, a new a new wave of uh, front man acoustic duos. Yeah. And so last time we talked, it was your LA show 2020. Right before, basically, the entire world shut down. How does it feel to be back touring and you're on tour right now? It feels almost like you just picked back up, but I'm sure it's a strange feeling to be back. I don't even know how it... Sometimes it feels like it never happened. And sometimes it feels like it's been, like, forever. Um, I mean, it's definitely nice. It's definitely nice picking back up and pretending like it never happened and uh, just rolling on. It'd be a lot easier to pretend if it still wasn't around. <laughs> like, it's, uh, it's kind of breaking the, uh, the bubble of reality a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to be back at least like to some sort of like normalcy. We definitely miss doing this because this is basically what we do for a living and a life. So it's nice to be back on it again, finally. So this has been a pretty substantial West Coast tour. You've got a lot of different stops, not just in the major cities. Has anything really stood out this tour so far? Um, something stood out. Yeah, I mean, I just think the craziness in general, like it's, when we had all this booked, there really wasn't, there was no new variant. Like it was, you know, just kind of like, business as usual we thought we were going to be able to like kind of go through this unscathed um but on this tour we've already had our openers already dropped like really that's uh, besides like that like really i hadn't seen it except for like la i think attendance is lower than it would be last night there was a lot of no shows in los angeles like so it's a um yeah it's still just kind of that pandemic swing Thankfully, a lot of us have already had Omicron, so we're not like, (laughs) we don't have to worry about getting it and infecting the band or anyone. And I mean, everything's like 
super vaxxed. Like I think at Troubadour last night, they checked vax cards three times and everyone's wearing masks. So like definitely don't feel like unsafe. It's just strange times. People are scared to go out, which I understand for sure. Yeah. But I mean, despite the chaos, I'm sure you're having a little bit of fun, hopefully at least on the road. Any fun memories thus far? Yeah, I went right for the doom and gloom, didn't I? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, fun memories. Uh, it was cool being in Roswell, New Mexico, because the first time we played there, there was literally no one there. And we literally just got drunk with like the owners and the bar staff the whole night. They're like, Hey, sorry about that. So you want to drink for the next five hours? And we're like, yes, yes, we do. Thank you. Uh, and then this time we came back and it was like a full house. So I don't know if that's us or promotion or just them doing some good work, but that was a fun show. Other than that, I don't know. I had some good seafood in San Diego. <laughs> I guess there hasn't been anything super crazy of note yet, but we are only like, I think this is our sixth show and we are heading into the mountains where there's going to be a lot of snow. So it's going to be some more fun stuff. Hopefully. I'm sure I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing anything you post on social media of your travels <laughs> as you go. Okay. More. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Man, so you said the band really, I guess, originated 2007-ish, but you started releasing music 2016. How has your music style changed, like, as this band, as it is since then? We didn't really, like, really, like, 2017, we had just, like, started towards the end. I think 2018 was, like, when we... Oh, wait, never mind. I see what you're saying. My bad. I'm thinking, I'm thinking one less uh, decade... Wow. Uh, yeah, sorry. What, what was the question again? Sorry. Uh, really, since the band formed and you had that first uh, EP drop, how has your music style changed or even like stayed the same? What elements have shifted? And um, I mean, we still we still can't decide on a sound, so we just keep writing whatever comes to us, like. I feel like we have a little piece of like every genre in our music now, which is cool. Like, I mean, we just have a hard time sticking with one sound. We just always have. It's just like whatever we're kind of into at the moment sort of comes out of the music. Never been very good at picking one sound and just, you know, nickel backing it to death, like the same type song over and over. Um, so like that's changed, but as sounds grow and new things like pop up, we bring that into our music. Some of the stuff that's the same is like, we always love to write just like a big song, I guess. I guess it's just like growing up, listening to bands like the Beatles or like bands that just have strong, a strong like pop format center as in just like a structure. It's like we play whatever music we like on top of it, but like there's always happens to be like big hooks and big melodies just because that's what we're drawn to. Like when I was young, I would listen to like songs instead of artists. I would just continually find songs that I thought were like the catchiest. And like, I was just always on the hunt for like the next big sounding song that was catchy. And I really liked so it was like, I was always kind of into that rather than artists for a while at least. And then I got into artists because that's what you do when you get older. But um, yeah, I think, I think that big sounds, big melodies, genre swapping, and uh, a focus on trying to write lyrics that mean something. That's pretty much held through. What's been, what have you learned from the process of releasing music as a band, I'm sure? Four people means four opinions, not to mention anyone else on your team. So what's that process like? I think at the end of the day, it's just like whatever song seems the best. I've always just kind of had it like the best idea wins. It doesn't matter who came up with it. Like as long as it's a good idea and you can tell it's a good idea, then like everyone's pretty flexible about it. So we really haven't had too much trouble with all that kind of stuff, thankfully. 
Yeah. And how did you keep collaboration and inspiration alive the last year or so? I'm sure with things somewhat being locked down and going in and out, I'm sure that influenced and changed a bit of songwriting. I know, again, you're trying to get people together and that has its own complications. So how does collaboration work now? It was interesting. Like whenever we were like writing this album that we're about to release, like we were working with our producer and we just did everything over FaceTime. Like that was like the main thing, just writing over FaceTime, which was really weird. It took like a minute to get used to, but once I did, like then it wasn't so bad. So we wrote most of an album on FaceTime. That was our main collaborative thing. And then like we would get together in like the studio and like just jam out like rock songs and just, we put together some songs for the album that way as well. So really collaborative was, it was either in-house or over FaceTime, which was weird, but just kind of became the standard after a minute. So I'm sure you probably can't say too much about that album, but if you could give us a teaser, a taste, what should we expect? Um, expect like big songs like we always have expect a lot of confusing genre changes like like there's songs that sound like uh like like 80s pop rock ballads and then there are songs that sound like like nirvana and weezer there's songs that sound like i don't even know like kid cuddy or the weekend a little bit there's songs that sound like uh, you know like smashing pumpkins like it's just like all over the place basically there's some some weird like i don't even know like gorilla z vibes it's just all over the place expect to be surprised looking forward to it track to track it's very different which i'm hoping people really enjoy since everybody kind of listens to like a little bit of everything these days but yeah definitely did nickel back it no, expect the expected yet the unexpected. Expect the unexpected for sure. And then I just want to know if you have any advice for up and coming musicians or advice in general. Is there anything you wish you had known before releasing music and going into the industry? Um, I mean, yeah, we were pretty separate from the industry growing up in Texas. Like we didn't really even know anybody who knew somebody. So my advice is probably just figure out your influences and like emulate them until you have your own style and then just write as much as humanly possible. Like literally there's so many bands out there, like you just have to outwork them all. Like I think that's the best advice you can probably get. Some people are more talented and it's easy. Some people get, nice breaks or they work with certain people that help them along the way. But like, if there's one thing that you can do that'll like push you the furthest and like make your efforts the best. It's just like work your ass off basically. It's the, it's the unfortunate uh, truth. I mean, it's a good truth to know. And I'm sure everyone deals with it. And get a good music lawyer. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. That one's pretty important. I bet. And then a bit different from that, New Year's just passed, obviously. Do you have any personal New Year's resolutions or any related to music? I didn't even think about that this year. Mine are always like really boring. It's like write more or uh, yeah, I don't even know. Wish I had like an interesting one. Like don't eat french fries or something but i'm not gonna i already broke that one so no i got nothing write more music that's all i got pretty boring i mean i think it's a fair one if you're an artist it's fitting yeah and then i asked you this last time and it's always one that i like to try and wrap up with but we always like to know who you're listening to. It's Unheard Gems. We're trying to find new music. 
If you right. could recommend another artist you think deserves more recognition, who would you recommend? Man. It could be multiple. I mean, we were listening to White Reaper uh, yesterday. They're amazing. I still feel like, even though they're on like massive tours with big bands, I still feel like not enough people listen to White Reaper. Um, I was listening to like this artist yesterday called Coda the Friend. And like he had some pretty cool songs. Uh, who else? That's all I got for now, I think. I just find your music. Honestly, like I just purged through. It's kind of reverted back to the old days, like when I would literally just go through playlists looking for songs that just like really seemed special and stuck out to me. So I'll just burn through tons of editorial playlists looking for something that like seems special to me so and then i'll save it in a playlist and move on it's almost like i'm collecting to like kind of go back and re-listen to everything but yeah that's the main way that i find them now yeah also kind of a boring answer but no i it do works. Anything, so it makes sense it makes sense it's the easiest way that i found yeah and then just sort of lastly for all of our listeners, where can they find you, your music? And if there's anything else you want to plug or leave us with, go for it. Um, they can find us at our social medias, which I'm sure any combination of the unlikely candidates backslash whatever the social media platform is. Um, what else? We've got an album coming out, hopefully in the next few months and another single Go listen to the song we have out right now, Gemini, and uh, come out to our shows on the West Coast. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.